Hey folks, so it's a it's a day off here at Unity, so it seemed like a good time to do a video from the perspective of just myself as a longtime custom tool developer and game and app developer. Uh, you probably know Pro Builder and some other things from back in the day. Poly Sketch, if you haven't seen it yet, it's pretty cool. New thing. Anywho, um, I think we have some really exciting things for the tool system. And again, as someone who's been through that on the asset store for a long time and custom and other places and worked with a lot of other developers, um, I feel like I have a good perspective on this and I'm excited to share what we're working on, mostly from that perspective. So first of all, I'm gonna go pretty quick. Details, just ask me anytime. Uh, but what I'm using here to show this is the current alpha version of Unity that's publicly available. And as a demonstrator of the system, Pro Builder in a, um, a branch that's also publicly available. So I'll share details on how to get those if you need specific info uh, on the video in the text. But first thing, uh, a couple pieces, I guess. So customization, contextual tooling, and patterns or consistency. I guess those are the major things that we finally have coming together uh, and bumping a little bit back to the Unity side. For a long time, you know, we've been there, we being myself, Carl, and the general uh, scene tooling team. I don't want to speak for anybody here, it's just consider this my own personal opinion. Um, we really, of course, wished we could have done a lot more specifically for Pro Builder and other specific artist tools, but in a very good way, on the other side, we've ended up building systems for everybody to utilize, and that's what I'm going to show here. So let me actually get to that. Uh, so again, just to really make sure this is clear, everything that I'm showing here is available to everybody, which is the exciting part. Um, we can have we can have a, a good shared world of, of good tools. It doesn't make sense. Let me let me just show instead of tell. Okay, cool. So first thing you probably already know, the overlay system, main thing to think about. If you're an asset store developer, a custom tool developer, you don't have to think about where things ought to be anymore. For example, you're thinking where should, you know, my tools or whatever exists. Don't worry, your user can place it as they like it into a toolbar. Etc. They can collapse it down, etc. So with uh, with the overlay system, just keep in mind that people have tons of options, and that's really the great part. And they can do nice things like quickly hide everything they're seeing. They can swap to um, you know between default, which is getting cluttered because there's a lot of things available, or you know back to nothing with a single click, or quickly swapping to anything else. Like I have this particular preset of mine that I like, very simple and clean. So not getting into details, just know that's there. It's great. And as a developer, don't worry too much about where you're putting things. Um, just make sure that they're using this system so your users can put them uh, wherever they want on the screen, however they want, show and hide them as they want. People will really prefer that, uh, it seems. So, um, okay, next. The really exciting part is so again, this is using the just sort of an experimental branch of ProBuilder to demonstrate how this stuff can be leveraged. Again, anybody else could. We've added in the creation tools as global tools. So in the regular overlay, anything can be added here. And these are meant to be tools that are always, always available. So they're not contextual. They're just saying, hey, we don't care what you're doing. You can access these. Pretty standard to any other uh, app like Photoshop, Figma, Blender, etc. So for us, that means creation. So I can click onto this and immediately start drawing out a cube here onto the surface. Or if I want, I can click and hold on this and pick different options. So this is the flyout or the tool variant that we've added recently. And I could say, uh, you know, I'd rather be creating something like some stairs and I'll put those over here. And if they came in sideways, not part of the system, but just was part of this tool, I've got a little gizmo to control it. So global tools sitting over here, great for creation. I think that's something anybody can use. The um, flyouts, great way, or, or the variants. It's a great way if you have multiple versions of one tool, basically. This lets you get in there and do that without having 100 in that list. And then contextual overlays. So this fellow here is the settings for the shape that I'm currently working on. And you might say, eh, this is cluttered, it's too much. That's fine. Again, remember for a user, they can choose, uh, maybe I want that to be just popping up in a toolbar. That's not a great way to put it, but hey, maybe I want that. 
or I just want it to be collapsed and I'll have it always kind of sitting down here. So like right underneath this one. So when I'm not in that creation tool, it just doesn't exist, right? Because it's contextual, it doesn't need to be there. But as soon as I activate it, there it is. And I can open up a uh, little drop down for the bin side there. Oh, there's gotta be at least one bug in this in every video. I'm not sure why that's appearing over there. Uh, so anyway, remember people have control. I'm gonna set that back to regular. That's what I prefer. I like to have all those options available for myself while I'm creating. But as soon as I'm done, it's gone, of course, right? So moving on to the next part. So another thing that's maybe well known, I'm not sure, but the component tool solution. So with this, or sorry, I start with nothing selected. I only have the basic tools plus the global tools, right? So move and rotate and scale, and then these glo uh, global creation items. But once I select an object that has specialized tooling available to it, you see this thing up here, the tool context, I can talk about that just yet. Um, hand motions are weird today. Anyway, um, gestures, not motions, whatever. Uh, towards the bottom, you have your component tools. So you know, nothing selected, nothing's there. As soon as I select this, it says, hey, based on this component, there's a tool available. In the case of a Pro Builder shape, that's our tool for modifying it. Could be just about anything else. If it had a uh, box collider, I'll just add a quick, oh, there it is. Use it for a lot of demos. Now I see that available. Again, this one doesn't have that box collider. This one does. It lets me know where it's coming from. And I can use that to do those edit edits nice and quickly. I don't have to go search for and find that. I know it's always available. And again, something anybody can use. If you have a component, it can specify tools. Those will appear on selection. Super nice and handy. The probably more interesting part, really the best part, I'm saving it for last, or part of the last area, is the tool context system. This is basically, and of course it started from our need for vert edge and face editing, even though the Unity editor is really just a game object editor, but it's something that we've built to be generic enough you can use it for a lot, a lot of things. So if you've used the new splines package, you're used to this, but just to display it here in Pro Builder, because we've done a lot more in this experimental branch, again, I have nothing selected. It just says, hey, you're in game object mode. I select this or whatever item it would be that has it. It says, hey, you have a special tool context available. And those always appear up at the top to say, uh, to indicate that they're gonna control everything in this toolbar. So as soon as I activate this, a couple things change. Number one, I have different tools available. In our case, we just remove the rec tool, but we keep the others. I've added an extra tool here that allows me to do some cutting into the shape. And really importantly, the tool settings have changed. So again, this is a fairly recent piece. Well, actually it's pretty old, but um, this tool settings is there to always show you all options for the current tools. You never have to, again, dig around and try and figure out where those things are. So in here, I have all the options for what I'm currently doing. I can start picking and selecting edges. So this is stuff that you can't do normally in, in Unity. But now with the tool context, I can jump right into that and do that work. No need for anything to be um, to be found or activate via you know the old school windows. You'd have to op open from the menu or, or just placed in front of you in some way you can't control. This, as a user, I can totally control it. I don't even have to see it if I don't want to. And taking that a bit further, let's say I do something like select these two faces. I want to know what can I do to these two. We now have the contextual right-click menu. So this is, I don't know, just bringing us up to the latest uh, decade or two, nothing too fancy or, or nothing new at all, obviously, but really exciting in that this is then populated by whatever the current tool context is. So right here, I'm in the, um, in the editing context for mesh. I have this particular tool option set, which is also important to this. So I see things like extrude or triangulate faces. I'm acting on those and I can click that. Another item, again, this is all generic. Anybody can use this, which is really the most exciting part. So now you can have um, basically editor actions that have options that can be previewed and canceled. Be nice if this would be live in the future, of course, but baby steps for a lot of things. So I can just say, you know, I'd rather this be going by face normal. Let's preview that. Let's actually make the distance a bit larger. So it's also easier to see. Take that, maybe go back to individual faces. Figure out what I want from this action when I'm ready for it. Hit done and it's there. So, or validate, we called it. So that's a, a much better way than the old method. And just most importantly, old method for Pro Builder, I mean, most importantly, again, it's something that anybody can utilize. Super, super useful. And 
about that right click menu. So right now you're seeing, again, just actions for face. Of course, if I went to edge mode and select a few edges, now I see actions for edges. So they're just brought to you contextually. This is what you're working on. Here's the right tools and actions for the right time. You don't have to dig around. I keep saying that, but I think it's really important and not how you didn't use it in the past. Also part of this, if you move back to game object mode, so I just disable that toggle, now work on a regular game object, the regular tools, etc. That right click menu continues to be contextual. So two parts to that, uh, you have game object actions based on the game object, and then you also have actions that are coming from, again, the component. So again, over here we have in the tools overlay, uh, we have component tools, and in here these are actions, so we have component actions. So this Pro Builder Mesh is saying, hey, uh, oops, let me that's outside of the recording view. Uh, it's saying I have a few actions available based on this component. So if I had something that didn't have that component, I'll just select the camera maybe. I'll right click and so it's not there, it doesn't exist, no component for that. But in this case, with the Pro Builder Mesh, there it is. And this is how I can perform actions like uh, exporting that object or triangulating it, uh, subdividing the entire thing. So these are actions for the whole object. Uh, as another good example, if I had just a regular non pro builder mesh so it's just basic cube here and i right click mesh filter now has a component action for what we still call pro builderize that one stuck around a long time which is kind of funny and that'll convert it to a pro builder object again in that sort of action it says hey you've got some options for this action are you sure you want to do it and how do you want to do it i'll say yep go ahead with those and it's done there so really uh, oops sorry and then to continue that now you can see it's a pro builder mesh so it has those actions on it. Cool, so that's pretty much it. These are the parts, we're at a little over 10 minutes. Um, again, just to, to go over that, all generic pieces that everyone can access and are uh, great for ensuring you don't have to make a lot of choices. Trying to put myself out of a job, I suppose, as a, as a UX designer. Um, we want it so that you say, I'm making a, tool set or a feature, it allows you to do this or that. How should it be shown or visualized or accessed by the folks that are going to use this? Well, you just have to put them together, essentially, even in the code and just register it as this or that type or whatnot, and it'll just work. And then really excitingly, it's just, uh, it's the same for everything. So for example, if I were to create a spline, this was recently added, so beautiful spline there. This works exactly the same way. So I don't have to figure out spline tools and mesh editing tools and whatever else might exist. The same as when I select the PB object, I get its tool context here and I can activate it and etc. and expect all the usual, you know, drag select, whatever, uh, work the same, exact same for a spline. I select it, there's its tool context. I can activate that, use all my regular tools. I have uh, the custom overlays or the contextual ones that I can interact with exactly the same as the Pro Builder ones component tools, all of that just works. Also, of course, the extra tool options. So I never have to wonder how to use any particular thing. I don't have to relearn each time. So that's exciting. It means as you're creating custom tools, your users won't have to step through pages of documentation or tutorials just to figure out the basics. As long as it uses this system, they can jump right in immediately if they know even one other system or just the basics of this. And again, customize it, especially via overlays be you know the the look that they want and the, the layout and such cool so that's all of it again now we're closing on 15 minutes i hope this has been useful uh, just to go over as i said it was gonna but then didn't all those items they are one by ones number one overlays just make sure you use those they're great they're fantastic uh implement so panel mode is the default you can also have horizontal and vertical those all work together and ensure that uh, let's say this was in panel mode. If I pop it into a toolbar, it'll use that one that fits it versus that one. Uh, and that ensures that you're really uh, using the most of those if you implement each of those, but they're, they're optional, should do it. Uh, other one is the right click menu. So again, that is with something selected. If you right click, it's gonna show actions for the component. You definitely want to uh, register actions to your component if you have special things like that. And of course the um, component tools, so things that will say, hey, I'm a tool based on this component. So I can activate that and, and do my work on it. And global tools. So these are tools you can add directly to the main toolbar and allow you to do things like, um, of course, have the 
uh, got to show that the, the nice old poly shape builder. So that or uh, you know these other creation tools. Uh, also the tool variant system within that. Oh boy, um, I had to hit at least one ear. Let me just ear that so it stops staring at me while I'm doing the work here. Um, <clears throat> sorry, a bit of a cold at this same time too. It's a great times for these things. Uh, okay, so um, tool variants. Uh, the last one then uh, being, and I, I think the most important, the actual tool context system. So when I select this, it says, hey, you've got this available. Now I can go into here and I can, I can work on that. And it's gonna basically work as you would in Blender or something else for selecting sub elements of something. And you set that up however you want it to be or more. I mean, it's quite generic. You can do a lot of things with it. Um, and again, the concept that went in there, you have the right click, which will follow the um, the edit mode that you choose. So, or, or the tool options and that uh, tool context or edit mode, and then the tool options themselves. So make sure you're just registering the options for your tool and they'll automatically appear up there. Same as the tool context will appear based on your component, the component tools, et cetera, uh, and, and things in the list here uh, in the right click menu. So all really, really, easy to use we hope let us know as you try them uh, i would say a great example to, or a way to try learning or start is taking the um the branch that this build of pro builder is currently on also just the current version of splines and check out how it's being put together there uh, we are super open to any suggestions or problems or needs as as you find them if you're building your own into this and we can uh, we'd love to update it and make it great of course to work for everybody that's the whole idea um again going back to the start of this conversation my opinion at least i uh, don't want to speak for anybody obviously really wish we could have spent at unity uh since joining from pro builder at unity um wish we could have spent a lot of time building up specific tools and of course there's been a lot of discussion on that on the other hand i'm really excited that we have managed to do so much towards this generic base that I think will ensure uh, everybody can build a lot of really, really good tool sets and we won't have the crazy Wild West situation that it used to be. Um, okay, so I'm almost at 20 minutes. This was supposed to be like a three minute thing. Uh, I hope it's been useful. Skip around, find some chunks in there, uh, share to anybody who may or may not be creating things, the part that you think is useful and let me know as well if there's something more you'd like to hear or um, things that uh, you'd like to hear less of. Okay, thanks a bunch. See you around. Happy tool creating. And artists, happy using this as well. You folks too. Bye.